Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mike was very generous. I am no rock star, uh, but uh, I definitely like to come up here and, and I'm privileged to speak to so many experienced surveyors. Uh, I do think there is a hell of a lot yet to be learned and it will continue to be so. However, I do think there are some aspects of the way uh, I think of this industry, of what I have discussed with my mentors, uh, three of whom are in this room, Hugh Brown, John Noble, and Alan Brink. And uh, I do think that there is a bit of perspective that I could bring to the table and may be valuable. One of them is flag state inspections, which is such an important aspect of how a ship uh, runs and is, uh, is uh, kept, uh, but it's usually undermined because most flags operate in a very commercial manner. Uh, without comparing one flag to another, I'd like to talk about the perspective of the one flag that has honored us with being a re authorized representative for registration work. We just about started doing some flag state work for them, but uh, being the authorized representative for the Antigua and Barbuda flag is a lot. There will be a few slides which will tell you a little bit more about this flag. Uh, I, I kept Mike on tender hooks until Saturday. Uh, I apologize for that. I wanted permission from the flag to use uh, their information to to broadcast as an example as to what uh, uh, Antigua and Barbuda does. So, uh, flag state inspections are the first thing that comes to mind as a surveyor. That am I going to only get some commercial gain out of being a flag state inspector? And that's what 99% of, of the surveyors will think about when they go after seeking uh, accreditations as flag state inspectors for any flag. Uh, it is a prestige in itself that a flag administration, whether it's an uh, open registry or it is a, a, a flag of convenience uh, or a second registry, is giving you that authorization uh, and accreditation honor of being a flag state inspector. But that's not where the money is, or commercial gains, I must be politically correct. Most of it is around it. It does help, but it's absolutely, actually, most flags, it's a loss-making proposition to the kind of fees they offer a flag state inspector. There's no way you probably even meet your, 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 your daily cost, your day rate. But there's a lot more around it, and that's what we will be focusing on in my presentation. What it means uh, to be uh, with a whitelisted flag, how it affects your own brand equity, your company's brand equity, uh, how, you can, how you can capitalize on that to make a difference on other aspects of your work and things like that. If, if, if you go back with a bit of thinking to do, from this aspect, I think I would have had put some ideas in the heads of, of, of fellow surveyors to look at it from a perspective that we think uh, there is uh, to gain commercially uh, on it. So, moving on, <clears throat> a little bit about uh, a little bit about uh, Antigua and Barbuda. It's a whitelisted flag with uh, with 30 years of permanent seat with IMO and uh, uh, they're very, very uh, clear about uh, their, their presence in the maritime cluster. Now, uh, uh, I always like to start with a bit of history, and uh, that's, that's probably one of the first few sailing ships which came into the Nelson docks, and uh, the slides are courtesy of the Flag Administration. They've asked us, we've asked them whether we could use it, and so be it. So, uh, these were the early settlers, and uh, it used to be called the English Harbour uh, on the hind side. And there was a Nelson dockyard uh, in those days. And that's what the oldest photograph that I could put my hands on. Uh, Antigua and Barbuda are just a 
pair of islands which which uh, which have a which have a very very strong presence in the uh, in the German shipowning uh, fraternity. Uh, they they are a second preferred registry, and as you can see, some of the vessels there uh, they are having a, a large number of commercial vessels under their registry. And uh, they're very keen on keeping the fleet young and clean. Uh, what that does, and why am I saying that to you, is you got to understand that you would be dealing with quality tonnage and ship owners would like to keep their ships ship shape. Uh, I, would, I would say that most ship owners would say that they would like to keep their ship the way it should be, but they're just sometimes not able to get their finger on it. But uh, no, the flag has a very important role to play in it. And that's part of the, the, the start of where the commercial gains comes from. Because the kind of owners that you would be doing the inspections uh, or the ships on which you would be doing inspections on would be understanding that they are happy to find some observations and defects and not you know, shoot the messenger, so to say, because there are enough times where people want to put a finger and say, prove it, Mr. Surveyor, that these are the findings, these are the defects that you have. So to start with, they will look at it with, with a perspective where you would have a, a, a thank you note at the end of your finding list saying, it is nice of you to, to find it, uh, find so many um, uh, observations. Uh, easiest thing to do, I think, to go out on somebody's ship and find uh, find uh, what's not proper, but to give an explanation around it and find relevance to it is, is very important. Um, that straight away puts you in the good books of the superintendent sometimes, whoever is on board and things like that. So what I'm saying is starting point, good good tonnage, very important, whitelisted flag representation is a, a winning proposition. Now, um, the Tiga and Barbuda flag vessels, uh, first of all, only require IX classification societies to, 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 to flag their uh, vessels with. Uh, 15 years or younger uh, would be preferred, but if they are with the flag and go over 15 years, they increase their inspection regime on them, which means ship becomes an older vessel, requires more time, and things like that. And it is the master who always has a full copy of the report on board gets verified elsewhere outside the, the Bremerhaven uh, office where most of the flagging is done and uh, the inspections come out of the, sorry, the Bremerhaven where the inspections come out and Oldenburg where the, the flag is marketed, so to say, mainly, along with the island, of course. We also have a yacht registry which is growing and that's more to do with the local uh, yachting scene and uh, Again, uh, crews and yachts are uh, what they want to increase their fleet presence with. Now, that's a bit about uh, Antigua. Now, what makes a flag what it is? Uh, I don't know if many people know, but there is a, a flag state report which comes out as a performance table every year, and that's issued by the Schengen Shipping. And that's kind of the 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 report card on flag states, if you know what I mean. And that's unfortunately been uh, misinformed quite a lot to ship owners or the superintendents, but you, if, you, if you look at the list carefully, and I've got a snapshot of what the table looks like later, we will have that. But uh, the commercial advantage is struck by what the shipping industry thinks of the flag, what the port state control thinks of a particular flag and its reputation, and how many boardings would a flag state or MOU would have when that particular flag comes in. I mean, you could have a, a, a brand new flag which they have not heard of with old tonnage. It'd be more than sure that the Port State Control or the Coast Guard authorities, wherever it is in the world, would want to look at it with a with a bit of a stiff stick, so to say. So, if you are if you if if you are a, a, a ship owner, 
it does cost a little bit more in terms of uh, inspection uh, routines and uh, and probably the cost of uh, tonnage tax itself. So, but but uh, to be on the on the positive side of that list is very very important. That is a snapshot. We will talk about that. <clears throat> so the purpose is to encourage ship owners and operators to examine. Uh, whether the flag state has been efficient or not. It's much like the, uh, the, 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 the underwriters, the PNI clubs. They come together, they like to keep the tonnage clean, young, uh, claims free. So, claims records are important, much uh, like that, the age of the vessel and its performance with regards to compliance with international conventions, very important to, to uh, a good flag. <coughs> Uh, more and more, uh, protection of maritime environment is coming to the forefront, and our flag is judged by its uh, its commitment towards the the environment. Uh, um, so, uh, again, uh, who are the first ones to sign up for the uh, ballast water management, the NOx ox, the regulations that are coming up? Um, um, Waste management regulations. These are the things which, because I know, does send the team out for audits every now and then towards the flag state administrations, and that's very important. How does that matter to the surveyor? Now, for a flag state inspector, it's important to know what new regulations are coming in. So, by 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 representation of the the administration, you automatically are on the forefront of understanding what regulations are coming and when. Because there are circulars that are sent out, uh, there are things, and this is a constantly changing environment. So, if, if you are a consultant and are aware of the new regulations that are coming in or will be coming in and will be affecting the shipping uh, in, uh, the paradigm, you should uh, consider yourself being slightly more impressive when you start opening your mouth in front of clients. And that can't not be related with commercial gains. And once you commit yourself with an administration, they will make sure that they send you whatever uh, new information is coming because they would be the first ones to sign up because I'm most, I'm most made up of these flag administrations who come up together and then say, okay, we all ratify the ballast water management or, or, or the codes or the amendments to the code, SOLAS, smart pole, whatever it is. And they send it out to you first that this is what we have said yes for. So watch out for these new things on compliances. <clears throat> MLC is a big one now. And there's more and more uh, port state controls, uh, administrations want to know what the flag has done for monitoring and compliances. There used to be a time when flag state used to just come and collect your annual views and go away, but now, there is more commitment that is expected. It's only going to increase going further. <clears throat> so, um, the, the commercial angle to this, I've, I've thrown in lawyers, I've thrown in the technical people who would be probably, you would be one of them. Now, when you're talking about a, a shipping company and a ship owner, the asset owner, you would understand he's always has been and will be on the top of the pyramid but everything else trickles down from it. And by representing a flag, you're talking one-on-one -on -one with the top of the pyramid. You might have the clubs, you might have the legal fraternity, you might have the technicians, repair yards, operational people, the charterers, the commercial guys, they will all want to be talking to the top of the pyramid. So your association is with the cash cow, so to say, if I may use that word. Uh, and that's why it makes it's so important for uh, a consultant to have in his portfolio of services a flag uh, administration or two, if there are no conflicts, to, to, be, to be associated with. That's the table I was talking to. And if you see those red marks there, those are awaited compliances. So that's the that's the that's table. It goes into two or three pages and all 73 flags tapes and potential new flags of conveniences uh, who, 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 uh, who applied for a status of compliance with uh, IMO all listed there. And uh, I, don't want to, I don't want to start telling you which ones have the most red uh, marks there, 
but it's a snapshot of saying these are all the port state control ratifications, age of the vessel, things like that. Uh, and uh, whatever is relevant to a person, you could go back and see that in the in the in the uh, table. <clears throat> now, ship owners unfortunately are not very well informed about this. They should be, but if you are approaching or know of some flag uh, reflagging or sale and purchase, uh, this is the table and the only table to refer to. There are a lot of other uh, uh, benchmarks which uh, uh, not so popular flags keep uh, showing two ship owners to convince them about uh, uh, taking that decision to flag with A or B flag vessels. But these are the ones which uh, which matter the most. But it, it's freely available on the on the website. <clears throat> then comes the importance of the the port state administrations and how are you going to be playing a part on, uh, in in the in the flag state uh, in the port state uh, regulations uh, the the dreaded uh, thing that a superintendent or a ship owner uh, hates to hear about is whether his vessel is delayed or detained or not particularly when they know the compliances are weak like this compliances or balance water management, they still not got the budget. They, they tell the commercial team that let's not go to a strict flag administration or port state administration. Let's only trade in, in a lesser um, compliant jurisdiction till we have the budget for it. And these days that is more and more relevant. But if there is a vessel that's detained by a, a port state or has an excessive deficiency list, uh, that becomes these days more or less a blueprint of that vessel. There are intelligence sites where you can go back and track two or three years records, and that straight away is the a black mark. I know one flag administration which actually will go back to a flag state inspector and tell them why did you not have a look at this aspect of the vessel there was detained and they've been struck off the list. Enough of them have been. Um, something um, Mike mentioned. Uh, about um, uh, yesterday's board meeting about uh, taking the, the, the CMIT uh, accreditation program to the clubs. I think the flag state administrations would be, I know most good flag state administrations will have the database of their surveyors in most prominent regions. Uh, what they hate to do is fly flag state inspectors from here to, yes, for accident investigation and serious uh, uh, casualty investigation from the flag perspective, they do. But uh, for a routine uh, annual safety inspection, they probably won't. And that's somewhere where a flag administration, a good flag administration, can gain out of the institute database, which I think uh, IMS is looking towards and is trying. Maybe a small island uh, where, where there is an IMS member, but no flag state surveyors there. And there's a vessel there detained, you want somebody to write, go running there because the port state detention would automatically mean the tension of the flag administration uh, should be on that vessel to find out why she can be detained and how she can be released. So that's a very important aspect and the MOU is always referring to the white, grey and blacklist uh, to the vessel. If your vessel, if your vessel is flying a blacklisted flag uh, with, the, with the administration, be rest assured that you will be getting a, 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 a post officer boarding the vessel to, to, to find out because they look at it as a, as a second step. Uh, a second pair of eyes. If the flag is weak and they're not bothered about uh, the inspection regimes, it's the beauty of the port state. The ship is there. If she pollutes things or has an incident, it's that state which is going to be affected. So they look at it from that perspective. <coughs> so um, the MOUs look at it as a, a, a minimum criteria before they can list you as a black or white flag. So list a boarding 30 times in the last th three years uh, and not uh, or they do not appear on any list is very important for them. Principally applies to both the Paris and Tokyo MOU region because these are the two most prominent uh, MOUs which, which uh, are uh, used as a benchmark. <coughs> so less than 30 is a question mark. Okay, let's stop. I'll press it too many times. Yeah. 
Now, uh, when we say, um, coming back to the Antiguan um, uh, example, Antiguan Barbuda flag example, the important aspect to, to understand is that um, the quality of what the flag um, has as a tonnage is important for everybody. And these days, the whistleblowers amongst the seafarers have become more and more prominent. You delay uh, a seafarer's wages by a few uh, weeks, if, if not days, you'd be rest assured that idea would be called on the, on the slide. And there's actually awards given to whistleblowers because they would come up and, and start trolling. Now, how does a surveyor come into that perspective or how do we come into this perspective? It is, it is very important to understand one of those days where we used to tear apart the master's attention uh, when there are two or three um, um, there's a classification, there's a flag state, there's a, there's a PNI surveyor, and there's a, there's a sole master there trying to please all three of them. One of those days, these days, master says, sorry, you can wait for two more hours. I've just come from an ring and got the vessel at five o'clock. We start everything at nine or 10 o'clock. There have been enough times where we just sat down and waited for him to get up. That wasn't there a few years ago. Now, if we do not understand that as surveyors, we will be rest assured, pulled up and asked questions about. It will affect us commercially if we do not get to understand that these days, work rest hours are extremely important. And we assure the board vessels in ports or anchorages play a very important role in getting that compliance out of the window on some bad days. <coughs> A little bit more about um, about the uh, flag administration. Now, uh, when there is a, a quality standard, these days uh, ISO standards are used very very loosely. But uh, IMO does send out audit teams to the administration offices uh, to inspect whether they are really meeting quality management standards and complying with them, or it's just a paper that they're sticking on the wall. One of the things with the, this administration does is to keep the inspection and the marketing office separately. Now, in Singapore and Dubai, where we are authorized representatives as Constellation, also this is separate. There is a, there has been a flag state inspection office for years that this flag administration has started to use, and we are really an authorized representation uh, representatives for registration work as of now. <laughs> A little bit uh, about something I mentioned at one of the conferences. Uh, I'll play this video. It's self-explanatory, uh, but the point here was, I'll give you a little preamble on what was being talked about here, saying that uh, these days, uh, the ship owners are running substandard vessels and the cost of running those ships at those substandard uh, levels is far lesser than the ones who want to comply with everything proper and 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 this is, that was the background and there was a, there was a panel discussion there was a big argument going on so i stood up here and um, and and uh, chipped in um about my views of how a quality flag affects the commercial aspect of the vessel so i thought it'd be interesting to play this video it's only a minute long then there's no volume it's completely useless then. Craig, I need your help. All right, I'll keep jabbering. This was at Fujcon, Fujara. Uh, um, it's, it was the 10th year of the Fujara uh, bunker conference. And uh, um, there was one flag uh, port state administrator from one of the small islands in the Mediterranean, and I say no more, who was actually uh, talking about the uh, uh, how the how some of the ship owners get away with uh, running substandard vessels. This is not the one. This one. So. Um, um, uh, the, the people whom I was addressing was um, uh, a charterer 
oil major, I can say that Shell, who was uh, would raise this debate before me, saying that uh, they're very keen on which surveyors they appoint and what flag vessels they charter. So uh, the point about this was uh, they, they, they somehow forgot that flag state exists. It was always talked about MOUs, the, the port states and things like that. One of the examples we had uh, two years ago or two and a half years ago was one of the vessels which was stranded with our anchors and we kept uh, telling the administration about how important it was for that laden tanker to come inside. Uh, no leaks, but it was uh, quite a badly mangled uh, head-on collision. Uh, there was a, there was a uh, unregistered vessel, in fact, uh, the report is on MIIB. I don't want to mention it, but um, um, that um, tanker was hit at 10.9 knots, much like the collision with Phil Shoki earlier. I don't have any uh, analytics uh, to show you. But this vessel was drifting with both the anchors were decapacitated. The flag administration, which also white listed flag had uh, uh, desperately tried to get this vessel inside port. Now there are 11 ports on the UAE coastline where we are in, in Dubai business Bay. It's about an hour and a half uh, uh, radius. We could, we could cover 11 ports. Now we went to talk to every harbor master. We were representing the club there, but the flag state played an extremely active role. The results weren't very favorable. The vessel wants to allow to come in any of the ports, but there was a point made that uh, UAE being a signatory to the IMO, with Erica given as a flying example and banging on it, emails and meetings uh, later, uh, they just couldn't get their head around uh, uh, agreeing to getting this vessel inside. She had an STS operation, but the power was uh, finally transferred. Uh, underway, so to say. But uh, the whitelisted flag, we, we um, one flag, but we as PNI made very, very interesting relationships. Initially hate, but then we turned it to love with these uh, port state uh, or harbor masters, so to say. Uh, and each one had a different, almost a different reason why he would allow. In fact, the cargo that was consigned to go into one of the large ports also didn't let her come in because the private birth owner wouldn't allow a breached hull. Those who are tanker people would know that there is a sire's inspection straight away required if you have a breached hull. Uh, so that is the reason. Now, there's another aspect that is uh, gaining a, a lot of ground and it's called Quality 21 and uh, flag state uh, uh, administrations are, are um, uh, benchmarked against this it, it is it, it is uh, a star on the on the on the 
flag administration if you uh, have a call sheet 21 accreditation and uh, that again is uh, is a very important um, consideration for getting charter hires from reputed uh, car owners. I, I just mentioned a couple of them in that video, Shell, Chevron, all these oil majors will always go for only white listed persons. Some of them even demand uh, a flag which is uh, got a quality 21 uh, certification. And, and there are basic criteria. US Coast Guard, AMSA are looked as the most strict um, uh, jurisdictions as state controls are concerned, but uh, they look at it uh, from a large uh, perspective. A lot of criteria have to be met. Now, as somebody who is representing the flag, it becomes very important to understand the benchmarking that uh, takes place with College 21, because that will again up your standards it's about fine tuning your eyes and getting there to understand the, the the meaning of quality because quality is means different things to different um, uh, stakeholders now <clears throat> this is the last slide i won't bore you much but eventually coming back to the environment uh, as a surveyor if you don't have an eye on understanding what regulations are going on with regards to environment awareness. Uh, however, uh, ahead of its time, it may seem now, but going in the future, a few years, and this is my view and only my view, uh, the blue economy is going to be something that's going to be extremely important. Hull foulings are extremely uh, important. The emissions are looked as a very important. Uh, we did uh, uh, with the, when um, when uh, one of our directors, Hugh Brown, was with Holman. We did a, 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 a investigation for our vessel, which was Indian flag vessel, which was taken in by administration. We it was purely about uh, environment. This vessel was taken in forcefully with arm guards on. Uh, with allegations of uh, polluting uh, uh, al almost a 14 nautical mile streak of oil. Eventually, we, 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 we gave a factual report and it did come out. But uh, as a surveyor, uh, it will look extremely, extremely proper if in your finding list there are a few aspects mentioned about environment. There are a lot of things you can look at the oily water separator, the incinerator, the garbage management log. Uh, the, the hoses for, for STS, if there are cargo hoses, certification of those, the, the, the save all um, uh, plugs. But if you keep an eye on that and have some aspects or some, some focused uh, inspection on those aspects, it is the future. What, what we're trying to say is this is where the quality benchmarking is looked at by a lot of people, including the flag administration. But to close, my last remarks are again saying flag state inspections are not. If I'm able to shatter this perception of us surveyors that we are accredited by a flag state for doing flag state inspection, and that's our thumbs up. That's not where the commercial gains are. And that I emphasize. We talked about a lot of aspects about quality, about what it means to represent a white listed flag and things. So that's where the story goes. As a reputation and a branding exercise, if we are able to provide a story in our elevator pitch saying that we are having the eyes, ears, and the know-how of representation of a, of a quality flag, that's where the commercial gains are. But before that, we've got to understand what it means because there's a lot there to, to know and learn. You know, these nominations are not easy to come. With this, I thank you all for the patient listen and to my mentors for guiding us in the right direction. Thank you very much.